You're listening to Linked AM. Tell your story on Linked Live and get noticed. You're listening to Carl Wolfenden on the Business Class Show and is not always affiliated with the guests and the topics discussed. Any financial statements are the opinions of the individual and you should seek professional advice before making any decisions. Upgrade your listening to Business Class, the show that puts you in the big leather comfy seats. So sit back and enjoy our take on the trending business issues of the week. Howdy, folks. Here he is, the Texas Brit, the guy with the stiff upper lip, filling his 10-gallon hat and his cowboy boots, Carl Wolfenden. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Linked AM. And, um, of course, uh, yeah, we've been having some fantastic conversations. I had uh, Marty Strong on, uh, the author of uh, Be Visionary, uh, talking about how corporations need to actually be not just creative in their forward thinking, but also visionary and start planning, you know, to, to actually uh, be in a, in a place ready for if there's something that happens uh, so they can pivot and, uh, and actually succeed rather than uh, uh, find that uh, the guy across the road uh, has opened up a, a firm that's doing the same as you and you're out of business. So it's all about planning. And it, it, it kind of dovetailed into the other conversations that we've been having around cybersecurity. You know, we've, we've been talking about, you know, the White House has been sending out these memos saying that you've, corporations need to start to shore up their, uh, their infrastructure um, from a cybersecurity uh, standpoint, because, you know, ERPs, the enterprise resource planning software that companies now are actually relying on. I mean, it, it handles financial information, it, HR, you know, supply chain, all of those different pieces that have got data in it. So um, it got me thinking, and um, I have a very good friend um, who is uh, going to be joining me any second now, um, and his name is David Vinson. And David, you're, you're in the virtual studio. Hello there. And uh, David Vinson, who is, of course, the VP of uh, Product Strategy and Customer Experience. Well, thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you for inviting me again. It's a pleasure being here. So, um, you know, we've been in my little preamble there, we talk about, you know, ERPs becoming software, being an integral part of uh, of a company, how they're growing and scaling, et cetera. Um, and of course, this threat that is really, you know, it's dark shadow that's over everybody's head when they've got all this data flowing through their organizations. Before we dive into that, tell us a little bit more about a a Appsian. It's, uh, you, that's your company, Appsian. Uh, thank you. I work for Appsian. We are a software vendor and we create a application that helps organizations manage the security to their application environment hundreds of applications because organizations have more than one ERP, as you mentioned, they have other business systems that they utilize. So we are application security, risk and compliance software providers. Uh, we're one of the only companies out there that uh, provides such a wide variety of services, capabilities and depth of capabilities. Uh, and the goal is to assist organizations to secure their applications, their transactions, and their data from all risks all the time and help them do that in a cost-effective manner. Because as you and I have talked before, these publicly traded companies must comply with audits every single year based on regulatory compliance requirements where they must prove they have effective controls in place uh, that safeguard ultimately the data. And that's what we're doing is providing the assurance that they do have those effective measures in place to defend against cybersecurity attacks. Well, that's interesting that you say that because one of the things that the, the topics that comes up all the time is corporate governance. Um, the, these organizations, you know, the, the, the board of directors that, uh, you know, or the fiduciary board or the board of advisors, et cetera, 
it seems to be, and I'm going to ask this question because I think you hinted towards it in that, that sort of explanation there, but it seems to be rising up the agenda. It, you, cybersecurity used to be this little topic that used to be at the bottom of the list, but over the past you know, couple of months, it seems to have risen to the top. You know, why is that? Well, I, I would say over the past years, it has constantly been rising higher and higher in the attention of the leaders of organizations. Why? Uh, it's because if they do not have secure measures in place to safeguard their systems, transactions, and data from the cyber attacks, the consequences are so severe. It, it means that the perpetrator may gain access to data that could uh, be relevant to customer data, uh, personal identifiable information, or it could be related to gaining access to uh, creating fraudulent activity and stealing money. So in both those examples, it hurts the reputation of the company so much. It can have financial impact. It can have social impact. It can have reputational impact. So organizations are trying to manage these risks of unwanted perpetrators coming into their environment with effective security and controls in place. Well, you know, one of the things we know is, you know, the the, the personal identif uh, identified data as such, the information uh, uh, that, that everybody seems to be so comfortable giving, you know, over the past, you know, two years, I think exponentially e-commerce has just expanded both mm -hmm. from business to business and business to consumer. But people are so used to just putting information into, you know, a form, uh, into a into an e-commerce engine, et cetera. Um, but we all think as consumers or, or users of a piece of software that, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be safe. It's because it's this is a reputable company and I'm going to put that information in. But all of a sudden, if something happens, my my attitude towards that company is if it goes in the news, it's like, I'm not going to use those guys again uh, because I don't feel as if I can, I can, I'm safe. So your, your, your sales completely can be, your, your performance, your financial performance could completely be impacted. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there have been many reports uh, across the internet, in the news, on the television, uh, about cybersecurity attacks that have been catastrophic in nature, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into any great details of names of companies, but the fines associated with it have been horrific. You know, one of the big online retail organizations recently was hit with a massive uh, data privacy non-compliance fine in the multi, multi-million dollar range, excess of $500 million, you know, they're still battling that right now. So th that's no small fine when we're talking about excesses of $500 million for a company to have to pay. So to avoid that type of severe penalty, they're taking steps to safeguard the data, safeguard the applications and the transactions with security with cybersecurity prevention, uh, threat prevention, vulnerability analysis, things of that nature that give them the capability to have a control environment to prevent the bad events from happening and to comply with laws and regulations that they must adhere to. And those laws and regulations are put in place to protect the common person who's an investor potentially in an organization, or they uh, work and shop with that organization to safeguard their own data as well. If we didn't have those kind of laws and regulations, they might not be quite as strict a requirement within the governing bodies of these companies uh, requiring effective controls. Yeah, um, we had a, um, a, a law firm on, uh, the, they specialized in, you know, cybersecurity law, et cetera. And they were sounding the alarm bells, you know, saying you have to have a plan in place. Yeah. You have to have, you know, what is, what is, what is going to happen? And from what I understand of um, Appsian, you know, and your, your platform, you've got four pillars. And those four pillars really um, help an organization, you know, try and sort of put together their, what their plan of action is, even before a, a, a actual situation happens. And then even if something did happen, then you have threat detection, et cetera, within that, that platform. Um, you know, the, you talk about financial 
uh, financial sort of impact. Mm -hmm. I talked about just flippantly a second ago about, yeah, it's, it's about sales and revenue, but it's the other side of that, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not just, it's investment. It's your, it's your investor uh, sort of confidence. Um, mm -hmm. And it could affect your, your actual value of your company, I would think, because these, you say about audits, I mean, are these happening every year, these audits? Every single year, every company that's publicly traded in the U.S. on any of the U.S. stock exchange uh, must adhere to laws and regulations that require that they provide evidence, uh, evidence such that when they go through a annual financial statement audit, they have to prove that they have effective internal controls in place to prevent or detect material level errors in those financial reports. And that is intended to safeguard the intended user of that report, the investor. They want to help the investor have a level of confidence that a independent party, that would be your auditor, external audit organization has come in and evaluated the company's financial reports and they'll form an opinion at the end of the audit, whether the intended user should trust that report, should they rely upon it or not. Uh, that is a safeguard measure that uh, compliance organizations, laws and regulations put in place to help. Uh, now, the types of things that they're trying to safeguard against when we talked about uh, effective controls is things like access. You know, do you have effective access in place to prevent unauthorized users from coming in, getting a hold of a data and uh, doing things that they should not be doing? Uh, but at the application level, there are so many different types of risk. Access is just one of them. And security measures are used to provide that type of preventive control mechanism. And the external auditors will evaluate whether or not you, the company, have effective controls to prevent those types of risks, those types of threats from impacting the accuracy of the financial reports. I remember my goodness um back back in the 90s i'm going back to the future here um that that we had to i was part of a big corp, big corporation and we had to we, we were on the under this um iso i can't remember the the acronym what it was but it was to be quality control but the 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 things that we had to do to to meet the auditors recommend you know their the requirements to become certified and to be compliant we were scurrying around, you know, and everything. And we wished that we had something that was in place where we could just go, you know, we've been running this for a year and all we're going to do is press a button, run reports, et cetera. We could do tests, et cetera, and show the auditors, but we didn't have that. But mm -hmm. I think with Absian, you, you actually have all of this so that you can actually, you know, sit back and go, yeah, I know that the auditors are coming in. They're going to audit me. They've got to be compliant etc and having a platform in the, that's running in the background am i right in saying that that's that's right because i know that i know the pain i went through when i was going through this quality control uh, compliance thing is that what you guys do yes we we're, we're trying to help organizations mitigate the risks that regulatory compliance requirement require evidence of effective controls meaning uh, we don't try to focus on all the different types of technology layers in your organizations, you know, uh, application network, database, firewalls, all these types of technology. We focus on the application, the business systems, and we've expanded to cover all of your business systems. So earlier you heard me say, we help you to safeguard all your business systems, all the transactions in those business systems, and safeguard the data in all of those business systems from inappropriate access or perpetrators gaining access and doing undesirable things to help you have the level of assurance that you are audit ready and can comply with laws and regulations in a cost effective manner. Because organizations have to change their attitude is what they need to do. They, they don't need to feel as though, well, maybe one day we will make an investment to be preventative in the nature of avoiding these events. They need to realize that it could happen. It could happen to them any day and they need to be prepared and they need to invest in preventative measures. And that's what we help organizations do. 
do it in a cost-effective manner. There are a lot of companies out there that are in business doing these types of things. We think we've taken it to the next level with types of automation and analytics that other competitors haven't offered yet because it's not about one business system or one ERP, as you and I were talking about a moment ago. It's about organizations having multiple applications that house the data itself that they're trying to secure. So we're giving them this cost-effective way to comply with laws and regulations to safeguard their assets. Well, I tell you what, you, you take the headache out of uh, out of the worry of saying, am I am I ready for this? So I think you know that's so important. What I heard you say also, you you are expanding now. I, I we've talked you know uh, a couple of times about how Absian is is growing and and you've scaled and you've you've grown very rapidly over the past few years, yeah. you know, and so do you want to sort of give us any, any teasers on how you're growing? I, I won't mention any names. I, I will say be prepared for an announcement to come out real soon. You know, it's probably about three weeks or within three weeks, we're going to announce that we have uh, acquired together a combination of seven companies to become one of the largest security risk and compliance providers for uh, business systems in the world. And we're going to bring a level of automation and analytics and preventative controls that organizations will highly desire because we're realizing that organizations not only have to address the financial statement audit each year, if they're publicly traded, they must also comply with regulations like Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, if they're in the healthcare industry, or maybe they have to address GDPR. See, they, they have many regulations and they have many requirements and it becomes tremendously challenging and we want to help them do it in a more cost-effective manner. Well, David, uh, unfortunately, we're coming up to the end of our <laughs> end of our time on our, our little segment here. But um, I tell you what, uh, what I what I've got out of this conversation, because it's a great conversation, it's a conversation that that the, the folks out there listening to this and watching, and of course, we'll be putting in a little, little article on this, um, need to understand is, yes, it will happen if they're not prepared. It's, it's, go, it's going to happen because, and that's, we've always said, you know, be prepared for the worst. If you plan, then you can actually, as we say, we can, you can pivot and you can protect uh, because the, the consequences we tell this to our kids, don't we? If you don't do these things, there are consequences. And, and the consequences um, are not just financial, but it could be devastating for uh, for people's lives. And you've got to think about that because if somebody's identity is stolen mm -hmm. and you're the reason for it, then that's that's a big news story and you don't want that to be out there. So, so David, thank you for joining me. And I always like to give a little bit of a, you know, the opportunity to summarize, you know, in, in a nutshell, you know, what, what you feel about, you know, the future of cybersecurity and, and why does somebody want to, uh, to really, you know, take a look at Appsian? Well, I've been in technology risk management for over 25 years now. And I've got a master's in accounting and in cybersecurity. And um, the problem is that as we are introduced in the business world to more enabling technology that enable us to do our jobs more efficiently, uh, we're becoming more online with everything that we do. We're getting exposed to new types of risks and we have to be prepared if we're gonna leverage that enabling technology that gives it advantages, we have to invest in a preventative control mechanism to mitigate the risks associated with these technologies. And the cybersecurity environment is just exploding with new threats, new problems, new challenges. And we need, are here to help companies take the headache out of learning how to resolve the problem, as I mentioned before, in a cost-effective manner about securing all your applications, all your transactions, all your data, all the time. David, thank you so much for joining me this morning. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, when that announcement happens, I'd like to invite you back on so that we can tell the, the, you know, the background behind it, et cetera. So I would Is love that, to have you back on. 
Absolutely. Thank you very much. Of course, that was David Vincent, and he's, of course, VP of Product Strategy and Customer Experience. And, and let's, let's just recap. That was a, that was a very, very um, informative and very important conversation. Because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility as a corporation to look after the data of your customers and also look after the safety of your investors because they're investing in you. So don't just sort of sit back and go, you know, yeah, it won't happen to me. It'll, you know, maybe next year we'll put that in the budget. You've got to look at it now. And, and it's your responsibility in a fiduciary way. Uh, to actually do that. And I'm sure your board of directors will think that as well. So um, if you need more information, I put all the information about uh, Appsian uh, on, uh, on the post, you know, the information on our post below. And um, as I always say, go out there, have some fun, but make some money because it's business. It's business class news. And if you're not safe in your data security, then you might actually uh, not be in business tomorrow. So think about it. It's a serious topic. And uh, until the next time, goodbye.